All right, so you love it through the service area, uh, prisons, and cellars. This chapter, okay, think about it being the last chapter that we discuss is probably a culmination of all the chapters that we've discussed. Does that make sense? So when we start talking about these things, service area and, and volume uh, in this chapter, they're not difficult concepts. Okay? What happens is calculating these things might be troublesome sometimes because one, the number one thing you need to know is everything that we learned in chapter 10. Okay? And some of us showed yesterday that we don't know a lot from chapter 10. Okay? Um, so those issues may need to be resolved by you uh, to be able to kind of press on through this chapter. Okay? Uh, but my, my thought, my mindset is I want you to get into the mind frame of how college works. Okay, because a lot of you are on that track to go to college, right? And I want you to understand that when you get into a college setting, okay, I've been in college since 2003, so I know what I'm talking about. The last couple weeks of college, okay, they inundate you with tests and work, okay? Um, and it's a culmination of everything that you've learned in the 16 weeks, okay? And you perform on that last final test. And that, that, that bears most of the weight in, in regards to whether you pass or fill that class. Okay? Um, they give you a final and they say, how well can you do with all this information we've talked about? Can you show me that you're versed in it? And then that's going to um, kind of be the deciding factor whether you pass or not. Okay? So I want to make sure you get comfortable with that because it does kind of blow your mind when you get to college and it's not like high school. Okay? Because uh, a lot of people get there and they spend one semester there. They have about 20 grand in debt, and then you try to pay that off by working at Kohl's. It doesn't pan out real well. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, so I want you not to be blown away when you get in that situation. Okay. So try to develop that experience for you. Um, all right. So surface area of prisms and cylinders. To, to get through this, uh, first kind of deal with some vocabulary and what a prism is. Um, a prism is a polyhedron. Polyhedron is kind of a fancy word for a, a three-dimensional figure. Okay, it's sometimes referred to as a space figure. Um, so everything we've dealt with so far in the course has been two-dimensional. Now we add this third dimension of depth, uh, and we're talking about a 3D shape. Um, a prism is a three-dimensional shape that has two identical, or better word, be congruent. Two congruent ends or surfaces, and we call those bases. Okay, and all flat sides, which we call lateral faces. Like I said that might be a, instead of wor the word identical, maybe congruent is better. Um, surfaces is a better word than ends. And this is probably better to be written as surfaces as well. Okay. A polyhedron that has two congruent surfaces. Those are our faces. So in the picture, those would be the green surfaces. Okay. Um, and all flat both surfaces go. Okay. Um, all the other surfaces are flat. Okay, there's no curves or anything like that, uh, no undulations, no ups and downs, um, and that creates a prism. Okay? The green we call the bases, okay? all the other ones, the ones that are printed there are referred to as lateral faces. Okay? Um, a key question is, what are our bases? When we go from shape to shape, what are our bases? Okay? When we look at things that are what we refer to as non-rectangular prisms. Okay, and that's kind of made up, you know, made up word that I just created. Um, but a non-rectangular prism would be something like this. This is called a trapezoidal prism. Okay, because not every single surface is a rectangle. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, if I take like a tissue box or uh, your laptop or something like that, those are rectangular prisms. So if I show you something like this one here, that is a rectangular prism. Okay, and that is actually kind of the, um, 
it's almost a special case situation with the rectangular prism uh, in regards to finding surface areas and lateral areas. Okay? All other prisms, like the one on the right, that's the trapezoidal prism, or uh, maybe I look at uh, trapezoidal prism again. Maybe I look at this one here. That's a, a pentagonal prism. This one's a triangular prism. Okay? The surfaces that are not rectangles, the surfaces that are not rectangles are going to be your base. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we, we need to make sure that when we choose our bases, okay, and we highlight our bases, then every other surface has to be a rectangle or a prism. Okay? And that has to be the case for our formulas that we're going to generate here to work. Okay? Uh, so you cannot choose, um, you know, in, let me just show you a picture we're going to deal with here. Okay? Uh, we're going to deal with that green surface and that blue surface uh, as being our bases. Okay? Um, we have discussed in, in regards to um, the definition of a prism is that it is a shape that has two identical, two congruent faces, right? So the question is, well, why can't the purple, why can't this purple base here and that orange base be bases or orange surface be bases? And the reason for that is because it doesn't make every other surface a rectangle. Does that make sense? Okay. If I look at that one, let's just color it um, black, look at that one, color it black. If those two black ones are my bases. You see that everything else colored, there are some rectangles, but there are some pentagons as well. That's the problem, okay? Where if I let this green surface, let's make it black, and take this one here, make it black, are all of these surfaces that are non-black now, are all of those rectangles? Yes, those are all rectangles, right? And that's the key thing that we need to be able to decipher and determine every time we look at a prism. What are your bases? Okay? If it's a non-rectangular prism, then your bases are your non-rectangles. Okay? Um, so, for instance... If I were to look at, let me just create another prism here real quick. All right, so if I look at that shape right there, okay, which surfaces would you consider your bases? The octagons, okay? The octagons have to be your bases because then everything else is a rectangle, right? Okay? And the argument that somebody in the last class had, well, if I just say, if we, because this is the way we discussed it, is that if we just say that a base has to be um, opposite or parallel and congruent, then this surface right here, that blue surface there, and that blue surface meet that requirement of being parallel and identical, right? Okay. But if I choose those to be my bases, then not every other surface is a rectangle. And that's what is necessary for us when we're doing these questions and dealing with this type of shape is every other, we call them lateral faces, they all have to be rectangles. Is that okay? Right. Um, so there's just some uh, discussion here about uh, showing those uh, vocabulary words. Uh, whenever two lateral faces come together, we call those lateral edges. Um, so you, 
you were kind of pinpointing out there, uh, where a base and a lateral face come together, we usually call those base edges. Uh, so, you know, down here, this would be maybe a base edge because it's the, the meeting or the intersection of a rectangle and a pentagon. Uh, naming them, uh, usually we uh, talk about what the base shape is. So the base shape here is pentagon uh, and pentagonal prism. Okay, so we call that a pentagonal prism. Uh, the one on the right is a triangle, so we call it a triangular prism. Uh, pretty straightforward in naming those things. This one we call a trapezoidal prism because the base is a trapezoid, right? Uh, now, you also have altitudes, okay? Altitudes uh, are the distance between two bases, okay? The distance between two bases. That's key for us to understand. When we're talking about distance, just like we have all year, it's the shortest distance possible, so we've got to have right angles, okay? So in that picture there, I'm showing you um, some altitudes, okay? Uh, but... Not all of them are being described there. We go back to uh, this image here. Let's see here. Let me get rid of the octagon here. If we look at, let me just make this transparent real quick. All right, can you see, it's still kind of bad. Not that good at rotating and mess around 3D stuff. Don't do it. Why not? But we'll get there. All right. Can we see this distance right here? I'm moving around. Okay. Um, that distance is this point down here at the bottom where my cursor is is stuck in that blue plane. Okay. It's stuck in that blue surface. Um, look at it that way. Uh, you see that it's not ever coming out of there, okay? And now I can't move it. There we go. Um, this point up here is stuck in the blue surface, and you can see that there's little right angles in there, right? Does that make sense? So that is the altitude of this um, pentagonal prism, all right? And it could be anywhere, as long as it is the distance between the two bases, okay? Now, the place that people... Uh, are maybe more comfortable in recognizing and seeing that um, distance is maybe when it is right here, okay, or right there when it's these lateral edges. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, but it doesn't have to be. It could be that distance there. It could be that distance there because they're all what to one another? Congruent. Those, those distances are all the same. So that is uh, your altitude of the prism. And now this is going to be key for us to, to put on those um, phrases at the end of a prism. Altitude of the triangle or altitude of the base, okay? Because there are several altitudes in this problem, okay? There's an altitude of the prism. There's an altitude uh, associated with the shapes and the bases. Okay, those bases, we probably have to, most part of the area of those bases, we would probably have to segment them into a triangle and a rectangle. Would you agree with that? Would there be an altitude of the triangle? Would there be an altitude of that rectangle? So those are things that we've got to pay attention to. And it is confusing because 
they use H all the way through. Okay? They don't use anything other than that letter uh, to kind of describe our, our formulas and stuff like that. Uh, so that is something to pay attention to uh, as we move on to examples. Um, again, as, as always, H, um, we want to think about it as height, but try to avoid that. We want to think about it as the altitude, uh, so it's not necessarily a vertical distance. So there you're seeing the altitude uh, in that picture on the right being uh, the distance between the two bases. And that's how I'm going to uh, describe it and ask questions about it when I say what's the altitude or what's the distance between two bases. Um, and that's going to be the H value that you use. Um, most of the prisms that we deal with are going to be called right prisms. Okay? And a lot of times it's just a, uh, the word right is understood. Uh, if they don't say, if you say you're looking at a pentagonal prism, then we're going to make the assumption that it's a right pentagonal prism. They say, look at this triangular prism, we're going to make the assumption that it's a right triangular prism. And all that means to us is that the lateral faces, all those clear faces up there, are rectangles. Does that make sense? Right? And that's going to be, that's going to be beneficial. And about 99% of the, uh, the prisms that we will deal with uh, throughout the course will be right prisms. If you ever have to deal with a non-right prism, you use the exact same formula, okay? Uh, and the exact same procedures. However, if I'm dealing with a non-right prism, we refer to it as being oblique. Okay? Um, the way I remember that it's oblique is that you have muscles in your abs on the side, and those are called your obliques, right? Okay. Is, is that prism leaning to the side? That kind of makes sense? Okay. Um, so whenever it's leaning to the side, that's what they mean by oblique. And that's going to actually be a word that you see um, kind of appear in other courses as well. Oblique is a, uh, a math word uh, that ultimately means uh, we're dealing with something kind of sloped or slanted. Um, in this case, when you're dealing with oblique prisms, your altitude is still the perpendicular distance between the two bases, okay? But it's not a lateral edge. Does that make sense? Each one of those lateral edges up there in that picture, uh, the solid black lines and the dotted black line in the back, all of those are hypotenuses, uh, which means that they're not the shortest distance. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, if we look out to the to the left of that picture, you have that red dotted line, that red vertical line. That's the distance between uh, the two bases. Okay. But if I were to give you this. Um, called oblique pentagonal prism, and I asked you to sit it on your back, I gave you a tape measure, most people would go from that corner right there straight down to the top of their desk, right? And that would be the altitude, okay? Um, that's the one thing with oblique prisms that is different. Everything else, you, you approach them the exact same way. The formulas I'm going to teach you here in a little bit um, are, are used and described in the exact same manner for right prisms and oblique prisms, okay? Uh, if I look at those, the word oblique here is referring to the fact that our lateral faces now are no longer rectangles. They are no longer rectangles. What are they? Okay, they might be they might be rhombuses at some point, but what are they? What would you say, Tyler? They're parallelogram. Okay, that's saying you know, now we could maybe classify them eventually as rhombuses or whatever. But right now we know them to generically be. Um, or best described as just parallelogram. Well, what's the area formula for a parallelogram? Space times height. What's the area formula for a rectangle? Space times height. Okay. So if it was a right prism, we'll use the BH formula. But if it's an oblique prism, we'll still use the BH formula. So that's the reason why the formulas are going to be kind of consistent as we talk about here in a little bit, regardless of whether it being right or oblique. Um, so here's some other oblique prisms. Um, all the lateral faces are parallelograms, all right? Uh, I said this already, naming prisms, you classify them by their base. That's the first thing you're gonna ever do is look at the bases, see what the bases are, uh, then maybe look at whether it's right or oblique, uh, and then you can name it that way. So, um, you know, if my bases are rhombuses, uh, and it's oblique, then maybe call it an oblique rhomboidal prism. We'll deal eventually with our regular pentagons, 
regular hexagons, regular octagons as bases, trapezoids, uh, squares, rectangles, that kind of stuff. Uh, and when we talk about squares and rectangles, those are kind of the, uh, um, uh, I don't know what the word for it is, but they're a little bit different than others, okay? For the fact that, um, would you guys make the argument that if I chose, and I think this is often what people do the most, and it's, way they get in tr it's why they get in trouble for other questions, is that when we see a rectangular prism, do, would most people argue that those are the bases? Okay, and, and the reason for that is that they are congruent shaped, right? They're parallel. And I think the key thing here, though the most important thing is, is that it makes the remaining four surfaces rectangles, doesn't it? Okay, so we call those bases. So if those are bases, that red H, absolutely that's the altitude. It's the distance between two bases. But here's another question. Does that surface right there and that surface right there have the exact same characteristics. Are they parallel? Are they congruent? Do they force the other four surfaces that I did not shade in to be rectangles? Yes. So those meet the requirements of being bases as well. And we can let them be bases. Okay? Does that make sense? So with rectangular prism, that's called a rectangular prism up there. Okay? Or um, and you guys are familiar with cubes, right? That's a rectangular prism with all the dimensions of this thing. When that's the case, it doesn't matter which set of opposite sides is left to be your base. Okay? However, once you choose those, now between those blue bases, that would be my altitude. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, which that H is going to be different than the other H. Does, it, does that make sense? Okay. Um, but everything works out still to give me the same uh, information that we learned regardless of the base that you get. The front and back ones if I want to. And that's where people, we, we do a lot of examples with it. You've probably already done several examples with those in other maybe science classes or uh, you know middle school math classes or whatever. And then we get in the habit and say, oh, well, I let the, I let the top and bottom be bases here. So over here, I'm going to let the top, that one be the top, and that one be the, top, the bottom. And I'm going to use those as my bases. Well, that violates what we know to be how we describe bases. Does it make sense? Okay, so that's a problem. Yes? This, the one on the right? No, this one, this one is a trapezoidal prism because this surface here. Oh, you're, so you're saying that you're, you're seeing like uh, kind of like a perspective type thing? Uh, no, because think about like if it was perspective, um, so there'd be like a point back here that everything is kind of going back towards, right? And then if that that might be the case, if if this was all by itself, you could look at it that way. Uh, but this this is a trapezoid. This is, these are two different shapes. All right. Um, So right prisms, we talked about that stuff. Talked about oblique, all that. All right, so um, <clears throat> kind of talk about the key formulas here that we're going to use uh, to deal with these problems. And these are going to be formulas that are pervasive through the rest of the year, okay? So the surface area of a solid is measured in square units, okay? Uh, and, and really surface area, if you think about all surface area is, um, is taking all of your areas, all your individual areas of your three-dimensional shape and adding them together, correct? Do we understand that concept already? All right, so if, I, if we took this room, are we inside a rectangular prism? Yeah, okay. Should I paint the floor? Should I paint all four walls and paint the ceiling? I can do that, right? And I can, when I do that and, and talk about all those areas added together, everything that I would paint, that would be the total surface area of this rectangular prism, okay? Um, now, a lot of times we talk about the surface area on the outside, but the surface area could be on, if I was on the inside, if you're looking at it the same way. You just, um, same quantity. Uh, lateral area, this is a little bit different. Lateral area is just the sum of the areas of the lateral faces. So when you find lateral area, that does not incorporate your base area. Okay? So lateral area is just the sum 
of all your rectangular lateral surfaces. Okay? Uh, and your lateral area is actually, um, you know, we, we see example problems and practice problems in regards to it, uh, but it's something you have to find on your way to finding surface area. So our overall goal is to find surface area. If we get to that, you need to find these lateral areas here. Okay? Uh, total area is the sum of all lateral faces in your base. Okay. Uh, it's called a total area, sometimes it's called surface area. The textbooks that I use for your questions, you're going to flip, flip, flip back and forth between those words. Total area or surface area, they mean the same thing. Same thing. As we search these formulas, okay, capital B is going to denote an area of a base. Okay, which, so that basically tells us that capital B is another formula. If my base is our triangle, capital B means one half BH. If my area or if my uh, bases are uh, pentagons, regular pentagons, then capital B represents one half AP. If it's a rhombus, then capital B represents one half D1, D2. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, but our surface area then, if we if we take these three bullets, four bullets, and kind of put them together, surface area is lateral area plus two of your bases. Okay. And that's how we're gonna kind of address all of these uh, problems that we go through uh, the remainder of the year. Now, a lot of you are, are maybe comfortable with surface area. You've done it before, okay? Uh, you guys have seen uh, these things. Let me see if I can, last period it kind of froze my computer, so hopefully it doesn't do it again. All right, so I've got a rectangular prism here. I can change the dimensions. I don't really care. Uh, right now, it kind of looks like a cube. Um, so let's maybe make it more like that, okay? Uh, and if I want to find the surface area of that, maybe you guys are familiar or comfortable with doing that. What did I just create? A net, okay? And you can simply see then that the surface area would be the sum of all six of those regions, right? Okay. Um, and if you want to find surface area doing that, that's fine. Okay. If you want to find lateral area by recognizing that this surface here, that surface there, and that surface there are bases, so everything that I didn't color in would be making up your lateral surfaces. If you want to find those four areas down together, that gives you a lateral area, by all means, that's fine. But I'm going to give you formulas that do that a much quicker, okay, in a much quicker manner. And if you're a person that says, I'm not going to, um, you know, take this instruction, I'm not going to use these formulas that, that Mr. Spade provides us, then all I'm passing this quiz is you are probably not going to finish. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, because I'm not, I don't want to give you something and teach you something that you already know. You already know how to do that. Yeah, you've done that in previous courses, okay? Let's talk about how we can use mathematics to be more efficient, all right? Um, so we'll get through some examples here um, in, in being able to do areas, surface areas, much quicker. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is actually how we develop a formula here uh, for these surfaces, so, or, or for, for uh, lateral area. So let me remove a few things here. Let me do this. Almost 
Okay, so I want, I want us to create a formula here for finding the lateral area of this shape. Okay, so the lateral area is going to be all these shapes except for the black pentagons. Does that make sense? Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to look at uh, this surface right here. And if I look at it at that view, that surface is a what? Uh, yeah, probably a rectangle. Okay, it, it could maybe be a square. Um, but how could I find the area? And, and I'm going right now, this H here is the distance from T to D. Okay, um, how could I find the area of this? I don't color that in greenish blue surface. It'd be D times H, right? Does that make sense, to everybody? All right. What if I look at this purple surface, which is a rectangle again, and that distance is E, and that distance is H? What could I do there? E H, right? Okay. What about that green surface where there's a letter in here somewhere? It's A. Okay. Where I look at that green surface. And that distance is A, but that distance is H. How do I find that area? A H. Um, get that B out of here. Okay, so this red one would be B H. And this last one here, this would be C H, correct? Okay. What would I, if I wanted to find the lateral area, what, what am I going to do with all of those areas? Add them together. Okay, so when I add them together, that's fine. That's going to be my lateral area. Now, that's kind of an ugly formula, and that's a formula that is only right now working for a pentagonal prism. What do each of those things have in common? H. Now, if I factor an H out and I... Uh, I'm left with D plus E plus A plus B plus C. And I rewrite that as A plus B plus C plus D plus E. What is A plus B plus C plus D plus E? Okay, it's the bottom links. It is, because this is my base, right? It's the what of my base? It's the sides all added together, which what's another word for that? Perimeter. Okay, so lateral area is equal to the altitude H times P. Now, the way we usually write that is P times H. Okay, where now it's important that we understand this. P represents the perimeter of the base. Okay, so you're not going to be able to find lateral area if you can't identify what the bases are correctly. Does that make sense? Now, H is the altitude of the prism. Okay, so one of those variables comes from a two-dimensional shape. The other variable comes from the three-dimensional shape. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so lateral area is pH. Okay. And what's nice about that is now that when I change shape, when I change the pentagon to an octagon to a trapezoid to a rhombus, P is consistent. Right? P is always going to be perimeter where that shape is. So this is a formula that we can find a lateral area for every single prism we deal with, okay? Uh, so I want to do an example, okay? Now, we'll do, provided the time, we got a couple minutes here. Uh, let's do this triangular one first, okay? Uh, it says find surface area. So in order to find surface area, we need to find lateral area first, okay? So lateral area is pH, correct? P comes from the perimeter of the bases. What are our bases here? The triangles, the non-rectangular surfaces, right? Okay, so the, the perimeter there is 16. Now, H is the altitude of the prism. Well, okay, that gives me 192. Is that much faster than taking this rectangle and saying it's 16? Find this rectangle on the back and saying that's 60. And this rectangle on the bottom and saying that's 72. And adding those three numbers up, P times H is much quicker. Much quicker. Okay? 
So now, the surface area is lateral area plus two bases. Lateral area plus two bases. What is your base here? It's a triangle, right? So it's a five by five by six isosceles triangle. When I find capital B, the formula for capital B is one half BH, right? Now this H is the H for the triangle. It'd be that distance there, correct? What is that distance going to be? What's that going to be? Good, that's three, H minus four, good. Okay. So now, four, not four, two, um, I would have lateral area, which is 192, plus two times this one half B H, where we know one half B is six, H is four now, right? Would be 12. Centimeters squared meters. Okay, from there. That makes sense? That's much quicker than finding all five surfaces and adding together. Okay. Um, there is a map Excel assignment going to open up at some point later on. It's not due Monday. Okay. Uh, it'll probably be due maybe Tuesday. Perhaps earlier. 